Hey guys, we interrupt your Free Speech TV for some Wake Up Missoula, your local last best morning show here in the city of Missoula and county. Uh, if you have charter cable, we're on channel 189 and 190, but of course you can always watch me online by go by looking me up at wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also Google me, so there's so many different ways to find the show as well. So let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. I got a bunch of news. I got some. I got a summer series a video made by the kids from our time travelers camp, which is a nice, fun little nature. Um, it's called Nature Guy, and I'll show it later. So let's kick things off. Weather, it's getting hotter and hotter. You can expect there's uh, temperatures in the 90s today. It looks like Saturday is going to kind of try to dip down into the high 80s, but it's pretty much going to stay within the uh, range between 92 and 89 throughout this whole weekend, all the way through Monday. Um, but expect sunny, clear skies happening most of the weekend. So, you know, it's pretty much nothing's happening here, but I think the biggest thing that's happening in the Missoula area is the fire season. Let's talk about uh, some things that are happening um, in the state, Missoula, um, and basically around the, the region of Montana. On the November ballot, voters get, a, get to choose a ta to tax tobacco products in Montana to help expand Medicaid. Uh, the tax hike from $1.70 per pack of cigarettes to $3.70 would price cigarettes at an estimated 6 89 per pack by the 2018 through 2019 fiscal year and 737 by pack by 2022 to 2023 by the fifth year the tax would generate 74.3 million dollars per year and the Montana Attorney General's office estimates and April 2018 study prepared by the Bureau of Business and Economic Research at the University of Montana says that the continuing Medicaid expansion began, began in Montana back in 2015 will generate 5,000 jobs, $270 million in personal income each year from 2018 to 2020. Besides expanding Medicaid, extending Medicaid expansion, revenue from boosting the tobacco tax will fund veteran services including suicide prevention, long-term services to allow more Montana seniors to remain in their homes, and smoking prevention and secession efforts. So anyways, um, this is going to be uh, on the November belt, so you guys get to vote on whether or not you want to uh, put taxes on tobacco products. Up next, uh, speaking of smoke, uh, some uh, communities out of Lewis and Clark and Jefferson County are now banning open burning as fire season begins to rear its old ugly head. While many mushroom pickers rejoice from the bounty of the land, the cost of last year's fire season has been a proving ground to be proactive in this upcoming fire season. Missoula's fire danger currently is blue, which is considered moderate, but also controlled burns are uh, banned as of of, I think it was just a couple days ago, but just so you guys know right now there is no c controlled burning and all fire But campfires are legal so you can start a campfire But you actually have to make sure that the area around it is been dug up and you have some stones around the fire as well because you can't just Get sticks together start a fire You actually have to have some rocks and stones around there around your own fireplace as well so just letting you guys know on that. But the open burn bans are related to burn permits and do not affect other types of burning, such as campfires. Jefferson County officials advise that campfires must be in a ring and a sustainable source of extinguishing the fire must be available. So pack up your fire extinguishers because it's going to be a barn burner as we get hotter and hotter later this year. In national news, things are heating up between uh, trade between China and the U.S. as to the tariff war with the United States starts uh, getting into its preliminary round. Many ec uh, economists believe that China is in a better position to wage this tariff war and could sustain trade tariffs with the U.S. Last year, China spent $500 billion dollars on U.S. exports. China grew in, as an economic superpower by becoming a major exporter, rapidly developing a large and highly efficient manufacturing base that enables it to sell cheap products all over the world. Made in China became a common phrase in the last few decades, and with, its, with this tariff, many Chinese companies can count on government subsidies to tide them over when things get rough, and they don't face the same pressure from shareholders to turn a profit each quarter like they do in the U.S. Economically, China's $500 billion in exports in the United States are equal to about 4% of its gross domestic product, and losing even half of it would be a big blow. But China can gradually replace it by exporting to other countries, something it has already been doing for many years now. 
So that's kind of what's happening right now. Uh, many uh, people are kind of looking at where China is at the exports and how they can handle these tariffs on their own, whether or not they can endure, or they can just up and trade with other countries and not trade with U.S., which would also affect not only China, but also the U.S. Uh, as a whole. So just something that's kind of constantly going on here as well. Um, it's it's kind of funny if you really think about it, is that uh, Trump wants to improve uh, um, ties with Russia, while at the same time, China and U.S. are kind of going at odd ends. So um, you, yeah. So that's kind of what I, I kind of want to end it right there. I don't want to talk about it too much. Um, I'll let you guys draw some, some some conclusions on your own. So I got some new programs for you guys airing on MCAT. We got uh, Valley Christian School where they performed a Mary Poppins and uh, a couple other programs as well with the continuation of the a cappella um, performances and barbershop performances from the UM recital hall. So all that and more on MCAT happening this weekend. If you guys decide to stay in and watch MCAT, Channel 189. So stay with me, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about some movies that are coming out. I'm sick and tired of your stupid sayings and your stupid games. Just get me to bed. Well, I don't want to go to sleep, and you can't make me. In that, as in so many things, your information is faulty. Playing the game, having a ball, those who won't play. Don't play at all. Will we meet again? Maybe when they've learned to play the that happened um, between Oñate and uh, Miguel's people was down here and they recently found this archaeological site that uh, sort of matched up these two events. So we have archaeological evidence for Juan Oñate's battle at this particular place that Miguel drew. And there's this other tradition that comes out of the far north, um, and it's an Ojibwe tradition called Wigwasabak, and it's associated with the Midewiwin societies. And um, these scrolls are only unrolled at special ceremonial occasions, and they include um, multiple types of information. This is a geographic map, highly schematic, of the route from the St. Lawrence Seaway along the north side, kind of that route that uh, Champlain took, um, over Lake Superior and then finally to Leech Lake in the boundary waters of Minnesota. And By coming to the point where you find one who really articulates what freedom is all about. And so she had to create a hospital. She was such a brilliant surgeon. White women came to her, paid her fees, supported her enterprise, and she was able to treat black women and the children free. Hey guys, welcome back. I read an article uh, the other day about Adam Sandler, and Adam Sandler is one of those guys who takes care of his friends. And speaking of take care for, care, taking care of his friends, he likes to put all of his friends in movies, and when he gets a chance to make a movie in an exotic location, which is most of his movies, he likes to bring his friends along, which include Kevin James, Chris Rock, uh, usually a, a handful of others. Um, Steve Buscemi is one of them as well. So kicking things off, it is pre-critic, starting with... Hotel Transylvania 3, uh, a boat vacation thing. Anyways, 
It's called Summer Vacation. And we're back on vacation, but only for more vacation and screen time for Adam Sandler's friends from all sorts of backgrounds in his past movies, both literally and others. Anyways, you can do it. I don't know why I said that, but as part of Adam Sandler and his friends to get a hangout on a boat with monsters, right, Hotel Transylvania is actually animated. It has nothing to do with actually them going on vacation, but they do get to go in booths and record their voices and get paid for it, courtesy of Adam Sandler and his entourage. So anyways, it's an animated vacation monster movie that stars an, a, a, the usual cast from Adam Sandler movies where you can have underlying details of person, uh, persons mixed with a blown out plot with plenty of holes that you can ignore for shiny and dumb gags in this animated fun trip to places. I don't know. It's it's one of those movies where like you watch the trailer. It's just like, I guess he's um, in love with a woman who turns out to be the descendant of Van Helsing, who is a vampire killer, wah, wah, and then things happen. I don't know. It's, 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 it's just, it, it, you, get what you, you get what you pay for. How about that? That's good. <laughs> uh, speaking of shiny, um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson stars in a movie that tries to be like Die Hard, but this building is the tallest, most advanced, um, impenetrable, and plot device building ever built. Um, anyways, watch The Rock scale a skyscraper in this movie called Skyscraper. The trailer shows a man trying to save his family, and I assume he does because he's The Rock. He can never lose. Uh, coming next fall, The Rock beats paper. Critics are calling this the surprise of the century. All right, so those are some of your movies that are coming out. I got a movie for you that's coming out today, but I'm going to give you uh, 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 basically a... Uh, a preview of t this afternoon's uh, Time Traveler's big show starting at 4.30 uh, this evening. Uh, 4.30 to 5.30, a bunch of kids are going to be coming to you live from MCAT, and they're going to be talking about some of their documentaries and movies they made while here at the Time Traveler's Camp this week. So uh, this week, we're having Time Traveler's Camp. We have a live show every Friday f for the next uh, three weeks, starting today. Next week, we'll have uh, Stop Animation Part 2, um, talking about uh, some stop animation videos and animation movies, source filmmaker, all sorts of things we can teach the kids about it, sprite animation and stuff like that. And of course, our titular zombie camp will end up the July uh, and the summer camp season here at MCAT as well with another big live show starting at 4.30. So every show, 4.30 every Friday starting tonight for the next three weeks. So without further ado, here is a little taste of what you guys will see tonight. Um, and then when I come back, I'm going to talk to you guys about some city council stuff where they're talking about an update to where we are with the uh, water condemnation, um, the future about how we're moving forward with uh, counter-suing um, Carlisle Group. Stupid disposable cup. What are you doing? What? What are you doing? What? What are you doing? What? What are you doing? I'm just getting rid of my disposable cup. As you see, paper products in general are very underused. People only use them one time, and yet they're so sturdy that they can be used twice. Say for this helmet. Ow! Okay, never mind. I mean, paper, uh, paper cups are only used once. But instead, you can just take this nice drink. Refreshing. Now you try having paper cups by drinking out of the water fountain. Uh, no thank you. I'm not thirsty. I said drink. <laughs> Great, now we can move on with our tour. Now if you just follow me. And that's why you always recycle your bottles at the bottle recycling plant. Fire's nemesis. Huh. You, you picked the newspaper up right now. I don't feel like it. His powers of apathy are too strong. We have to use violence. Are you sure that's a good idea? Violence. Yeah. Ow. Violence. So, have you learned your lesson about recycling? You want to go home. I see. You're scary.
pushing. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some city council, public safety and health. The city of Missoula is currently in a cooperative agreement with the Montana Firefighter Testing Consortium group, which provides a collective avenue to test entry-level firefighter candidates. So, um, one of the things that happened is that they want to include Helena as part of the collective. So, Missoula is already part of this um, consortium, and Jeff Brandt, firefighter, thinks this is a good way to train firefighters and get trained firefighters. Um, so a lot of times it's a good way to, I, I th it's mostly for like the, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's uh, just a good way to get uh, Montana as a, as a whole um, trained and on the same level and the same kind of policies as all the other firefighter and fire stations. And here is Jeff Brent. Test new firefighters. And so as a group, uh, we believe that that, that, that that process, we're national certified in the CPAT, and together, collectively, we believe that liability then is spread and then a fair processing process, testing process for new candidates that want to apply. It gives uh, candidates a, a direct avenue into a physical test and a written test for testing for those 10 or 11 cities. And we do that once a year. And so folks can only have to test one time to go through that process, the physical written test. This motion today is to uh, allow the city of Haver, and they would like to join um, the consortium as part of that process. Thanks. As a All right. So uh, that was just kind of the brief of the meeting. Um, the city approved of this to kind of add um, uh, the, um, I think it was, yeah, Helena to the uh, collective. Um, anyways, uh, let's move on. Uh, that, there wasn't much to say about that meeting. That would mean it was fairly short and pretty streamlined. But the big thing that people are going to be want to want to hear and see and talk about is that our main lawyers, uh, Harry Schneider and Tasha Jones, came to visit the city of Missoula, um, and they talked about the water to uti litigation update. Uh, which Boone Carlberg is working on further uh, decisions towards Carlisle Group's bad faith agreement that caused the city to seek water condemnation trial that Carlisle Group used to attempt to hemorrhage money from the city by appealing to the state Supreme Court, which where it was completely stopped after review. Um, this is Harry Schneider, says the condemnation is near complete. Uh, it's been a case that, uh, contrary to my prediction, that I gave to John on several occasions that these things are like a roller coaster. You have ups and you down. You have downs and you have a few steps forward and some steps backward. Uh, that case, remarkably, in my view, uh, had very little, if any, steps backward. It had very few, if any, downs on the roller coaster. And, you know, I guess you could say you've never been more close to having the entire thing behind you than you do today. So what's left is really just a couple of, you know, in the big picture, a couple of. Um, very limited issues that are not yet finally resolved and they have to do with the award of fees and costs that any private property owner is entitled to receive if they are forced to give up their property as they did here to the city. Uh, there's a limited remand which means the appellate court has sent back to the trial court to Judge Townsend an issue on what information Mountain Water would have been entitled to receive regarding uh, I think hourly rates and so forth on what the city's fees were. It's uh, the, the uh, my view is the Supreme Court felt that that was some information they should have had access to in order for their own fees to be evaluated. All right. So um, during the process, um, um, the Carlisle Group in transition to the um, um, basic condemnation where the city took over the utility. There's still a lot of. Uh, um, red tape in terms of like wages, uh, cost of fees, every little kind of detail that's kind of been, uh, that was only available within their company. Um, the only really big thing that was actually available publicly with the uh, Carlisle Group's Mountain Water Company at that time was their uh, basically, uh, it was since it was publicly traded company at the time, it had to be uh, it, the profits had to be uh, shown. So basically, the, the large amounts of money were shown, but every any other details were not. So kind of like you know your water bill and stuff like that, they're not 
like it's like private information you're not supposed to tell about old Johnson's how much he paid versus um, Jeremiah down the street how much they pay for water anyways let's move on to the next thing uh, which includes um, Mr. Snyder who talks about the awarded fees to the city for costs incurred from the trial but also with the, within the bad faith agreement um, there is no going back to the courtroom the main issue now is figuring out fees that happened after the fact but the overall outcome will not affect the city in the long run. What we learned in the condemnation case, uh, I remember saying in the closing argument, you know, a light has been shed on the activities of the owner of the water company that the citizens of Missoula never had the opportunity to see before the condemnation case. The evidence that we acquired opened a lot of eyes as to how the thing really operated and what the expenses were and who was profiting and who wasn't and what monies, if any, were being spent on repair, replacement, and improvement of the system, information you never had access to before. Along the way, uh, we also learned information that I think makes the foundation of the bad faith case even stronger than we expected it to be. I think that actions taken during the condemnation case to run up the city's costs, in the words of the executive for Carlisle, we're going to spend as much money as we can, essentially, because we're going to prove that the city can't afford to write the check when you finally do obtain the opportunity to acquire the property. That was really their strategy. Make it so expensive that even if we prevailed on public necessity, we wouldn't be able to write the check. All right, so that was kind of like, uh, that was some a little bit of background about in terms of how much they were paying for it. Um, one condemnation and price hearing later, the city acquired the water company for just about $90 million uh, with the total price, including lawyer fees and all the work that went into it. There was a lot of pro bono work from a bunch of lawyers in the area just to kind of help move this case forward before Boom Carlberg was officially on the ticket. The money that should have gone to repairing damaged system went to shareholders and CEOs of Park Water, which was actually three water utilities, uh, which included Missoula. So uh, Harry Snyder actually talks about about where they are with Carlisle currently. Uh, the first thing that they did when I let them know that you know the time has come to complete that case that we started back in 2015, the first reaction was, can we try to reach a settlement? And I can't get into the back and forth of what was discussed, but it's pretty unusual when somebody says, well, you haven't really started your litigation, can we try to resolve it? Efforts were made, uh, efforts failed, and it would be our recommendation that we proceed with the litigation. Um, if I were you, I'd ask the question, what's the, what's the tag? How is this going to be another five years and how many zillions of dollars? Uh, the short answer is, I think, the honest answer, and that is, we think this case has already gone through discovery. Um, we think that the facts adduced in the trial, the two trials, and the depositions that occurred before the trials is all we need. We could try the case tomorrow if we had to. We don't need to do a bunch of discovery. We can't. All right. So uh, basically, Harrisheiner's uh, very confident on with Boone Carlberg's uh, where they're sitting at right now. I mean, it's it, especially because uh, he, because uh, you know, like if you listen at the very beginning, he said that they wanted to settle just before they wanted to close the case. So that's kind of like shows that exactly what it, what it was. Um, so. Uh, where we're at with the trial, so, since it seems like it's pretty much uh, a shoo-in that the city of Missoula will win. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about just how much that, uh, like if they try to appeal to a higher court, about where it will stop almost like immediately. So the Carlyle Group is a publicly, uh, internationally publicly traded company whose money must be public, but at any intention of sales and trades were not public knowledge. Uh, Mr. Snyder also talks about how much money Carlyle Group made off with and what they did during the tenure here in the city of Missoula. So this is kind of like the uh, uh, little bits of money that uh, they were, th not the little bits, but the, the, the sums of money that they were able to get from the park water as a whole by basically transferring a lot of money from Missoula, which is regulated statewide um, to another, like to a California water company where it's not as seen and it was basically projected as gross profit.
So it was very a lot of um, internal trading within them. Um, they were able to take eleven million dollars out of the operation, and the way that was accomplished was by collecting. I mean, they have only one source of income. It's the bills that the citizens and residents of Missoula pay. That's the source of revenue. And the way this operation worked was the revenues would come to Mountain Water. Mountain Water would pay a, quote, administrative fee to the parent company in California, Western Water, Park Water, Western Water. Uh, and that was for services that even their own witnesses said they didn't really need and certainly were more expensive in California than what you could obtain locally. But those monies would be funneled to California for the administrative services and support. And lo and behold, even though Mountain Water never made a profit, never made a profit, the parent company that received the administrative fee was profitable. And then that company would declare dividends up to Western Water and then up to Carlisle, and ultimately to Carlisle's investors who entrust Carlisle with, Carlisle with their money because they think realistically they can get a better return on their investment than if they put it in some other investment. So think about that. The only source of revenue is what the water customers pay. None of the operating companies, the two in California nor the one in Missoula, ever made a profit. And the reason why is it was by design. All right. So a lot of times uh, most people buy a water company not to uh, basically make it big. But they're in this way that they were able to kind of like have three water companies under the, uh, the name of Park Water, which allowed them to kind of move money around to different places. In Missoula and, the, and another California company, they were basically able to say, like, hey, we just kind of broke even enough to pay the staff and everything else. Well, the money in certain places where they could make a profit and give it back and basically put the b a buck up was able to uh, get the money and distribute it through the investors of Carlisle Group. So, where are we go? For, what are we? Where is the city going from here? Um, basically, the um, you would think that they wouldn't be able to make money from water utility uh, that only charges for use and not necessarily the cost of repairs. Um, you think about minimal maintenance. Um, basically, just like they pay the people to do the maintenance. And then they say that okay, this th we we invested X amount of money for the, the the repairs, and then they didn't need to use they didn't use all the money that was necessary to for main replacement and stuff like that. Just enough to make sure that the water pipes brought the water to your faucets. So according to the retired Montana Supreme Court Justice James Nelson, who reviewed this case back when um, Carlisle Group wanted to appeal to the Montana Supreme Court, uh, this is what uh, James Nelson said. I have not seen in my professional experience a more flagrant, palpable, and wanton fraud that perpetrated by the defendant Robert Dove, managing director and f of and for the defendant, the Carlisle Group, in this case. And I'll just end it there. Uh, so that's kind of like what's happening there. You can watch the whole meeting. It's the first committee of the whole meeting. There were two committee of the whole meetings because they t talked about another thing that's uh, happening in the city and county of Missoula, which is the open space bond. They want their... Uh, trying to get to uh, trying to put on the ballot. So in the afternoon committee of the whole, the meeting talks about the open space stewardship and conservation mill levy that would pay a portion of the cost of stewardship and conservation of open space lands. Here's Donna Cockler, Parks and Rec uh, director, talks about the implementation of this uh, bond. The levy um, in the broader language would allow us to do is if at um, some future date, we had opportunity to acquire a parcel and the open space funds through the general obligation bond had been depleted, we would still have that ability to use these funds or borrow against um, mill levy, if you will, to acquire uh, interest, whether it's a conservation easement, a fee simple acquisition or other. So it, it just allows the opportunity. As always, council will all, you know, have final say in what actually happens each budget cycle. All right, so that kind of gives uh, just just a little bit of background about what this bond um, would ultimately do. Uh, the bond um, is supposed to be a couple year years happening um, if if, what, if it was passed, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, here's Jesse Ramos. Uh, he's talking about some of his concerns about some of the money that goes into Parks and Rec. 
I just want to talk about the park special assessment because, as you know, it has gone from two hundred thousand dollars in two thousand ten to one point, almost one point six million dollars last year. And Mayor Ingen said that that was meant to be an offset to the general fund, which, I mean, it's just silly. I mean, you, you do realize that it's still coming from the same people. It's like if your power company sends you a bill for $100, but they just send it to you in two separate bills. It's still $100 coming from that. So to me, it seems like the park special assessment was more to kind of get around the, the um, general tax levy um, so that we could pull that from there. So I guess here's my question is, why has the park special special assessment grown so egregiously and why do we still need this $500,000 when we're pulling $1.6 million already from the taxpayers for open space and parkland and what are those funds currently being used for? Why have they grown so much? All right, so Donna Gockler does respond to this. Um, I kind of uh, clipped the beginning part of it because it's a pretty long answer, uh, but I got the tail end where it kind of sums things up a little bit. So here's Donna Gockler with a response, but if you want the full response, you just go to the meeting. What has been generally demonstrated by the majority of citizens is significant support for the topography, landscape, outdoor lifestyle that they so enjoy. And I think what we have tried to do is to steward that notion, that belief, that value in an appropriate and fiscally responsible way. Additional question. All right, so uh, that was the response. Uh, but getting into it just a little bit more, uh, money from the property taxes have changed over the past few years. In general, just the last eight years, uh, the financial uh, housing crisis back in 2009. And of course, the amount of fees would be fairly low because uh, the adjustments to all the uh, the recession that happened back in 2009. And of course, the budget has increased. And she also mentioned that a lot. there's a lot of fat moving factors in place with the Fort Missoula Regional Park, uh, the money that was put aside for maintenance as well with continuation of, of um, Currents Aquatic Center, Splash Montana, some of the money that gets made through there as well because Splash Montana is about f a little over five years now uh, from what I believe. Um, and m more and more people are, I mean, of course, are moving to Missoula and then more houses are being built to accommodate the people, which include the bump uh, that Jesse Ramos was talking about. Um, Donna explains how money towards the parks are helping as a result of demand of the majority of people, Missoula County residents. So we'll, oh, wait, 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 do I have that? Oh wait, never mind. I already, I, she already said that. So uh, here is uh, John Debari talks about how important it is for stewardship in the city of Missoula. We've acquired all of this stuff now that we're using it. Are you willing to support the stewardship of that land and it's in perpetuity essentially? And to um, address Ms. Merritt's question, when we do a general obligation bond for open space, there's a limited amount of activity that you can do with it. You can um, acquire land and you can fund capital improvements, but you can't maintain any of that. And so one of the rationales for taking this approach and why that language is in the resolution is that this provides the third leg of the stool, as it were. Um, we can not only uh, do acquisition with a levy, we can not only do capital improvements, but we can do the maintenance part of it. So it sort of rounds out the picture of what um, you know, what, what's in the realm of the possible in, in terms of uh, addressing our interest in maintaining and um, expanding our conservation land system. Okay, so in the past, open space bonds have been basically, oh, there's some open space. Let's uh, utilize the space and keep it uh, more of a natural park type area and just keep it as is. And then, of course, with invasive uh, weed and species, many um, groups were formed through the city and be like, okay, we need people to clear out the brush. It's like, well, we don't have that much money to pay for this kind of uh, maintenance that's on there. So what they kind of did is like, say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do it as the money becomes available for the open space deal. And so what they did was able to uh, get more volunteers. They always have volunteers to help do this stuff. They utilize some of the University of Montana, uh, just a way to get this kind of the ball rolling. But in this updated bond that you get a vote, get a vote on whether or not you want to keep, continue open space bond. Um, 2006 was when they first implemented the bond, and I think it's coming to its um, natural conclusion. 
so what they're doing now is implementing a new bond, which includes the uh, additional funding for the maintenance of these lands to kind of help preserve and also steward the land. So, you know, the difference between the conservation is just like buying land and protecting the land. Stewardship is basically getting land and basically trying to find a way to improve it and get a good uh, kind of like access to it along the way. So that's kind of how I want to end it there. I just want you to, needless to say, of how you, what you believe and what you want if you want the city of Missoula to buy more open space land as it becomes available, or you don't want to have this, this is going to be a proposed citywide stewardship uh, pr um, mill levy, uh, which consists of four mills or approximately 500,000, a half a million dollars annually, the estimated cost to a 265,000 and up home is assessed at $14.31. Cost for a hundred thousand dollar home uh, between a hundred thousand and two hundred thousand dollars is five hundred and forty no five dollars and forty cents um, and for of course any any houses between two hundred thousand and two hundred sixty five thousand um, dollars the tax would be ten dollars and eighty cents of course cost of a citywide special election to be held in conjunction with the never November sixth two thousand and eighteen general election is approximately two twenty thousand dollars to be on the ballot. Of course, if you want to watch this meeting as a whole, all these meetings and more are available on ci.missoula.mt.us, um, where I get most of my information. I get a couple quotes from the meeting, but it doesn't. my uh, uh, city council report doesn't necessarily do it justice, as you can see the whole entire meeting as its entirety. Uh, this uh, Both of the committee of the whole meetings, um, one was for the water utility. They took a break in between, and they talked about the open space bond as well. So you guys can check those out. They're just about under an hour each, so you have plenty of time to kind of check out what they're talking about um, by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Okay, I'm going to take a quick little break. I'm going to throw it to an art clip for you guys. And this is an art clip from the Missoula Art Museum, which will end by the end of July. So you have it until the end of July to watch the, to go to the art installation, to this art installation. Um, and then when I come back, I'm going to talk about events that are happening this weekend. So stay with me. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. I don't know why I did that as a threatening pose. But anyways, if you're interested in doing some indoor um, gymnastic type fun with your kids, uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Missoula Gymnastics and Roots Acro Sports Center is the place to go between now and until about noon today. Uh, of course, they have a couple camps happening at Roots Acro Sports Center, which basically happens all day today in conjunction with summer camps. Um, Tiny Tales and Story Time start at 10.30 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library. It's a good way for kids to uh, pick up books and learn to read and work with uh, some other uh, librarians to help them find the right book for them that really pops out and get them invested in reading. Um, kids Table at the library, in cooperation with Missoula Food Bank, the Missoula Public Library hosts a free kids lunch every day, every weekday from Monday through Friday at 11.30 p.m. This is for kids age 18 and under for anyone who wants just to uh, have a free have a free lunch provided by the Missoula Food Bank. And also, even if you don't necessarily need it, it's also a good cause to help uh, 
boost um, Missoula Food Bank is the more people who the more kids who actually eat at the free lunch also goes towards the Missoula Food Bank to be able to expand their efforts to help feeding kids who are under the age of 18. Cribbage and Bridge, hey, if you want to play some card games, it's a great way to go to the Missoula Senior Center, have a lunch there, or maybe even pack a lunch from the Missoula uh, Public Library and head on over to Missoula Senior Center and play some cards. But also, if you want to stick around the Missoula Public Library just a little bit longer, they have open hours in the makerspace, so you can create some 3D printed objects and more in their makerspace at the Missoula Public Library. Um, that starts at 1 p.m. and it goes until about 6 p.m., so you have five hours to work with that. Friday the 13th is today, um, and they're doing a Friday the 13th camping at Lolo Hot Springs. Hmm, good idea, right? Um, join us for the 13th um, soak at the Lolo Hot Springs uh, book a three-day camping site for Lolo price of $17.12. And, um, and that's two days uh, basically free. Enjoy all the Bitterroot and Clearwater mountain ranges have to offer. And it's, yeah, you can check it out. You can find out more information by going to lolohotsprings.com. Uh, Teen Writers Group is happening this afternoon at the Public Library at five, uh, from 3.30 to 5.30. Most of the uh, Missoula Events, uh, net website is littered with Missoula Public Library stuff for your morning and early afternoon. But as we move on into the late early evening, we're going into our MCAT live show starting at 4.30 p.m. So from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m., Channel 189, you can watch us live on MCAT. Uh, where we're talking about some of the documentaries that the kids made in conjunction with the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. Moving on, uh, other camps happen, not just MCAT, but Sleeping Beauty is happening at an MCT. Missoula Children's Theater will be performing uh, Sleeping Beauty. It's a new princess is born, and far and wide, the people of ki the kingdom gather to celebrate. One simple mistake is made, an invitation is misplaced, and the wrath of the vicious Sicaria falls upon a poor infant in the form of a spell. Sleeping Beauty's fairy godmothers do their best to amend the spell, but uh, the evil person tricks Sleeping Beauty into picking her, pricking her finger on, and the spell takes effect. 500 years pass, and the Sleeping Beauty wakes her face in a rock and roll dream. So uh, it's a nice little spin on it, the original play, but you guys get to see the children's theater perform this at four. 4 p.m. and a different cast performs at 6 p.m. and that's happening at the Missoula Children's Theater S Center for Performing Arts. Zetown Arts actually has two events happening tonight at 5:30 p.m. Uh, from the water that shapes us to Bolorama. So they uh, Bolorama is part of their uh, art installation, which includes um, bowling and art. So uh, it's a mixed media between fun with bowling and art, which includes uh, pins and bowling ball, uh, um, nice little models and paint uh, jobs to them as well. Uh, family Friendly Friday also starts at six o'clock at the Top Hat. So if you have a family or, um, no, you, must, you should probably have a family if you're gonna go to Family Friendly Friday from six to 9 p.m. at the um, Top Hat, uh, pretty much every single Friday. Art Talk with ceramicist Chris Drobnock um, like Missoula Tea Company, from 6 to 7 p.m., they're going to be talking about the functionality of ceramics include when it, w w w when it includes with tea. So the whole idea is like you want the right ceramics that, that pair really well with your tea. So they're going to be talking about this from 6 to 7 p.m. tonight at Blake Missoula Tea Company. Ginger's on ice. No, that's not racist, but these guys are two uh, gingerly fellows um, who do a comedy duo, kind of like Keen Peel. Um, they're going to be doing out the Roxy uh, two nights only, um, tonight and tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. at the Roxy. They're really funny. You should check it out. I saw one of the things at the Fringe Festival a couple years back. They were really great. And now they're coming back after, I think, a year or two of uh, a hiatus. Well, one of them tried to make it big in L.A. And we don't know. I don't know where they're at. I haven't been keeping track with them. But I think they're really funny. They do like a mix um, comedy type duo so it, a lot of times there's the performance on stage live and also they have some pre-recorded stuff that they'll be showing on the screen as well but if you're interested in doing anything else for your Friday night they have Blue Collar Band at the Sunrise Saloon Dead Hipster presents I Love the 90s so they play 90s music um, at the Badlander Cash for Junkers at Union Club Fate's uh, Fortune EP release party at the Top Hat, Grilla Radio, Rage Against the Machine tribute at the Top Hat Lounge. So all those are happening for your Friday night. I have another art clip for you guys, so I'm going to show you that, and then when I return, I'm going to talk about your Saturday and a couple Sunday events, so stay with me. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about all your Saturday events that are happening tomorrow. So kicking things off, I, I, I probably shouldn't yell too much, but farmers markets are happening from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. You got the farmers market that's happening at the Red X's down that way. This that's from my direction. Um, you got the people's market just over yonder and then at the uh, Higgins Bridge just about way over there just underneath Higgins Bridge is the Clark Fork River Market all happening all sorts of foods knickknacks uh, farmers markets uh, fish cheeses meats and all sorts of wonderful things happening for your Saturday all happening from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday all until about um, October around so you can't miss it um, Missoula Marathon Expo. Um, the Missoula Marathon Expo is held at the heart of downtown Missoula Outdoors in Karis Park Pavilion. Um, my favorite word, pavilion. Uh, Karis Park is along the Clark Fork River. It's basically telling you directions. Um, it's, it's where they're going to have the post-race festivities. The expo will feature many health and fitness vendors, shop for running and fitness apparel, sam sample healthy snacks, and learn about upcoming races and more. Uh, wildlife bio biology at the Spectrum Discovery Center. Learn about wildlife biology and, uh, at the Discovery Bench um, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5:30 p.m. Where the during the open hours at Spectrum. It's uh, 3:50, and if you're under three, you get in free. Um, Lolo, Lolo Days community event is happening at 12. So every town in the state of Montana has um, insert town days. Uh, it's family fun event. They will have a car show, vendor show, bake sale, auctions, bounce, obstacle course, cow pie bingo, pony rides, petting zoo, chili cook-off, beer gardens, live entertainment, and food. All this is happening at Lolo, at, Lolo, Lolo, at the Lolo Community Center. You can't miss it. It's just, just off the highway as you're going through Lolo. Open hours and tours at the Moon Randolph Homestead starting at, at 11 a.m. Pretty much every single Saturday, Moon Randolph Homestead is one of Missoula's oldest uh, properties, uh, which they open. Uh, it's, it's basically like a history lesson while also, also stewarding the land where they have apple picking. They have all sorts of wonderful things there, but it's also owned by the people of Missoula. So if you pay taxes, this is part of your community. So you guys can check it out. Um, and it's the Moon Randolph Homestead. They have open tours and they do this from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the public uh, tours are available during a first come, first serve basis. Of course, we're skipping all the afternoon events that are happening there. There's a bunch of pu Missoula Public Library events as per usual. Um, but tomorrow night is the the second in the series of the Hellgate Roller Girls events. It's Hellgate Roller Derby. Um, the Hellgate Roller Girls is um, is happening at the uh, Outdoor 4-H Pavilion at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. Um, you can visit um, the Roller Derby's Facebook page. All you got to do is look up Hellgate Roller Girls on Facebook to find out upcoming events and more. Make sure to like their page and uh, always look out for their uh, um, fundraising events as well to help support the uh, full contact female sport that is Roller Derby. Uh, Gingers on Ice will also wrap up their two-day show at the Roxy Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. Um, here are your, some of your late night Saturday events. If you guys are planning on going out for your Saturday, um, you got some DJ music at the Badlander. You got some Country Ugly Pony will be playing at the Sunrise Saloon. Band in Motion will be at the Union Club. And pretty much that's about it uh, for your Saturday night. Um, I, I want to kind of skip ahead. There is uh, something happening for Sunday. Uh, there's the Missoula Marathon. It's uh, ki things are really kicking off around 6 a.m., but the real race doesn't start until about a little bit later after that. But I think the events and all the activities are starting at 6 a.m. The Missoula Marathon course is flat, fast, um, USATF certified, and a Boston qualifier. The marathon the marathon course does have a significant hill at the halfway point. The Missoula Half Marathon course is flat and the course is also certified. The course is a point to point beginning with a scenic route through the countryside and fishing in historic downtown Missoula. The course are well marked with both uh, cones and arrows on the road. Uh, so that's what's happening. Um, the Missoula Marathon um, all kind of started as early as six in the morning so you'll get to enjoy a lot of people running into the downtown Missoula area. So be aware of traffic. They'll be congested on the Higgins Bridge because usually the Missoula Marathon is a big event in the downtown Missoula area. Family Clay Workshop, July session starting at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, wrapping up pretty much your Sunday is the Clay State of Missoula will create um, with some family ceramics. The Clay State of Missoula Affordable Family Workshops are perfect weekend activities for adults and children to do together. And this happens from 2 to 5 p.m. Um, on Sunday, July 15th, 
but also it's happening August 5th and September 9th. Um, those are the cheap uh, nights uh, for Clay Studio of Missoula to do a family clay workshop. So those are pretty much all the events that are happening. If you are interested in finding out more about events in the Missoula area, you can go to missoulaevents.net. Hey, what's happening in Missoula? I don't know. Why don't you just go to missoulaevents.net? Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you very much for showing me this. Missoulaevents.net. You find out what is up to date and what's happening in the city of Missoula. But there's always more in the city of Missoula as well. You can always go to umt.edu slash events, which is the University of Montana events. They're kind of like their own, they have their, their own community as well, but they do have a lot of public events and lectures happening at the University of Montana, usually year round, but most frequently during the school year. During the summer, they do have a bunch of recitals that are happening as well. So that's kind of, that's how I'm going to end the show. If you want more information about me and myself, you can always go to my website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write out twice. Make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter, all that and more. But also, you can find out more information about MCAT and our, all our upcoming programs and more by going to MCAT.org. Local government, click on this link right here to find out more about what's happening within your city of Missoula. Whew. Now it's time for me to wrap up. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you have a good and wonderful weekend. It's going to be nice and warm. So if you guys are planning on jumping into the river, going floating, the river is getting a little bit lower. I've seen some people floating. It might be safe to go floating. So you can enjoy that. Um, wear some sunscreen. Enjoy some sun. It's going to be nice and clear this weekend. So I'm going to end the show now. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Join me next Wednesday where I talk more about what's happening in the city of Missoula and more Wednesday a date that's happening in the future. Mm -hmm.